October 5th. I breakfasted in the dark and made my rounds of the house. Everything was in good order. The master was asleep, so I let myself out and prowled the vicinity. The day would not begin for some time yet. I walked beyond the hill to Crazy Jill's place. The house was dark and quiet. Then I turned, to head for Rastoff's ramshackle abode. I caught a scent as I did, and I sought its source. A small form lay unmoving atop the garden wall. Grey Malk, I said. Sleeping? Never wholly, came the reply. Catnappery is useful. What are you after, Snuff? Checking an idea I had. It doesn't really involve you or your lady, directly. I'll be walking to Rastoff's place now. Suddenly she was gone from the wall. A moment later she was near. I glimpsed a glint of yellow light from her eyes. I'll walk with you if it's not secret work. Come, then. We walked, and after a time I asked, Everything quiet? At our place, yes, she replied, but I heard there was a killing in town earlier. Your work? No. We were in town, but it was a different sort of work we were about. Where did you hear of it? Night wind was by. We talked a little. He'd been across the river into town. A man was torn apart as by a particularly vicious dog. I thought of you. Not me, not me, I said. There must be more of these, of course, as the others seek their ingredients. This will make the people wary, the streets better patrolled between now and the big event. I suppose so. Pity. We reached Rastoff's place. A small light burned within. He works late. Or very early. Yes. In my mind I traced a path back to my own home. Then I turned and headed across fields to the old farmhouse where Morris and Macabre resided. Greymalt continued with me. A piece of the moon began to rise. Clouds slid quickly across the sky, their bellies tickled by the light. Greymalk's eyes flashed. When we reached the place, I stood among long grasses. There were lights within. More work, she said. Whoo! came Nightwind's voice from atop the barn. Shall we answer? Why not, I said. She offered her name. I growled my own. Nightwind departed his perch to circle us, finally alighting nearby. You know each other, he remarked. We are acquainted. What do you want here? I wanted to ask you about that killing in town, I said. You saw it? Only after it had occurred and been discovered. So you did not see which of us was about it? No. If, indeed, it were one of us. How many of us are there, Nightwind? Can you tell me that? I don't know that such knowledge should be dispensed. It may come under my prohibitions. A trade, then? We list the ones we know. If there is one among them you do not know, you furnish us with another we do not know, if you can. He swiveled his head around backwards to think, then said, That sounds fair. It would save us all time. Very well. You know of my masters, and I know both of yours. That's four. Then there is Rastoff with quicklime, Greymalk offered. Five. I know of them he responded. The old man who lives up the road from me seems of druidical persuasion, I said. I saw him harvesting mistletoe the old way, and he has a friend, a squirrel named Cheater. Oh, Nightwind remarked. I was unaware of this. The man's name is Owen, Greymalk stated. I've been watching them. 
and that's six. Nightwind said, For three nights now, a small hunched man has been raiding graveyards. I saw him on my patrols. Two nights back, I followed him by the full of the moon. He bore his gleanings to a large farmhouse to the south of here, a place with many lightning rods above which a perpetual storm rages. Then he delivered them to a tall, straight man he addressed as the Good Doctor. It may be they are seven or perhaps eight. Would you show us this place? I asked. Follow me. We did, and after a long trek we came to the farmhouse. There were lights in its basement, but the windows were curtained, and we could not see what the good doctor was about. There were many odors of death in the air, however. Thank you, Nightwind, I said. Have you any others? No. Have you? No. Then I would say that we are even. He took wing and hurried off through the night. As I crouched sniffing near a window, I traced trails from Morris and Macabre's place to this one, from this one to Crazy Jill's, to my own to Owen's, from Owen's to the others. It was hard keeping all of the trails in mind at once. I leaped at the bright flash and the crackling sound from behind the window. The smell of ozone reached me moments later, and the sound of wild laughter. Yes, this place will bear watching, Grey Malk observed from her sudden perch high in a nearby tree. Shall we go now? Yes. We headed back, and I left her at Jill's, dropping the adjective out of politeness in her presence, and I left her to catnappery on her wall. When I returned home, I found another paw print. <laughs> 